Okay guys, uh, we're just going to pick up right where we left off. So we finished lessons one, two, and three on the uh, Let's Learn Tinkercad lessons. Uh, we're going to start on lesson number four, making and manipulating grouped objects. Woo! So I'm loading it up. Okay, so as you can see there's a little heart-shaped structure here. So, so one of the most powerful tools in Tinkercad is um, grouping objects um, and linking them. And so you can make some really unique and cool shapes. So first it's going to have us drag this box in there. All right. And, oh, not a sphere. Don't want that. Let's go with the cylinder. There's one. And keep in mind, you can also copy and paste these things. Like if I set this guy here, I delete it. I can click this guy, and I hit Control C to copy, or you can hit um, Copy right here, and then you hit Control V to paste, or you can hit Paste right here, and move that guy in right. There. Okay, so we drag the cylinders. Let's hit next to continue. Let's see what's going to tell us to do next. Now, in order to create one solid object, you need to group uh, the three overlapping objects into a heart. While holding shift, click each of the shapes and select so there's a blue glow. So shift's kind of like if you want to select a bunch of things. Ooh, looks like I didn't get quite on the line. Scroll in a little bit. Um, no need for whoa, whoa, too much, too much, too much. All right, so nothing selected. If I hold shift, actually, if I don't hold shift, I can still select something. But if I want to select anything else after that, I have to hold shift. So I selected that cylinder. I'm going to select the square. As you can see, this little thin blue line goes around here, but it doesn't go around this one because I haven't selected. I'm going to hold shift again and select that. Now they're all selected. Now we're going to group them. So up here in this menu, we're going to click group. Boom. Now we can't have an orange heart, man. Come on. Nice job. Now we're going to try duplicating it into two. When you duplicate it, you'll be placed uh, directly within the original shape, which means uh, because they're identical, they'll appear as one. And you'll not be just so in the menu bar, go to edit and then select duplicate. So right here and duplicate. Boom. We got another one. Okay. So there's another one on there. Now scale the duplicated object so that it is centered smaller and taller than the original. A grouped or complex shape will scale just like a primitive shape. Okay? So we click on this while holding the Alt button on the keyboard or Command on a Mac. Grab the height and make it on the same height as the there. Now it says grab a corner and while holding shift and alt, so here's a corner, shift and alt at the same time, those two keys, make it smaller and it should scale, oh, oh control Z. Try this again. So we're going to click here. We're going to hold the Alt button. We're going to grab the top uh, white square. We're going to make it bigger, just to the top of that. 
We're going to grab a corner. Holding Shift and Alt. Hmm. It looks like we still need to raise it up some, so I'm going to move it up a little bit. I don't know if that's what it wanted me to do, but that's what I did. I might have done something wrong there, but there we go. Now let's cut a heart-shaped hole in the heart shape solid. So we're going to take a Boolean subtraction from another object. Ooh, what a fancy word. Even though we are working with complex shapes, we still have behave as one in Boolean operations. With the smaller heart, you select it, you're going to click hole. Next step. And then you're going to group them. And now we have our heart-shaped box, our little thing, cookie cutter. Either delete your shape or move it to another slide. We can move it away, and we'll just go to the next one. OK, so now we're going to make like a house, but the roof is not on the house. So we're going to move this guy here. Oh. Grab this guy. Boom. Done. Okay. So these shapes are relatively aligned with each other. The height of this one is, yeah, 20 off the ground, like it said here, 20 millimeters off. Uh, double check. Yep. Next. What do you want us to do next? Okay. Let's say if you want shapes to have different colors, you need to change the colors of each shape before you group the objects. Because complex shapes behave as one, once the shapes are grouped, changing the color will change the color of the whole complex. So select the cover of your house using the color inspector. We will go with that one, and then we'll go with the darker color like they did, it looks like. Maybe they want this one. Okay, we're gonna move this guy over. Boom. Okay. Group your objects. Don't worry about the colors. Let's take a deep breath. We'll get back to them. So we're selecting them all. We're hitting group. Oh no. So the color menu in the inspector can change the group to any one color. If you want to design more colorful, there's a special setting at the bottom called multicolor to restru restore the original group shapes. So boom, look at that. So it's still a group, but it has two different colors. Very cool. Scaling. Our house looks a little small. Let's make it bigger. Just like any other shape, we can use the handles of our complex group. So we're going to grab this guy, and we're going to pull it till that number right over there says 50 to match this box, like it says right here, 50 millimeters. Now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Grab this guy, and boom, 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 boom. Done. Now we're going to duplicate it. So we click duplicate. And we're going to rotate this one like that. Next. Oh, we got to, it looks like we got to scale down this. So we will pull this guy into here. Or no. Looks like we're going to pull this guy down to, is that what it's asking us to do? Oh, it might not ask us to do that. I'm going to do it anyways, because I want to. 
Oh wait, I need to go back. We need to add the door. So, if you just don't want to click hole, you can go and put that guy in there. Lesson five, use the align tools and the work plane helper. All right. Leave, that's okay. Hopefully this one lesson won't be as long as yesterday. I've actually never done these. So I didn't know how long they were gonna be. Huh. All right, how to use the align tool. So, um, now that you know how to group objects, combine objects, duplicate objects, it's time to put things together. In this lesson, we're going to build a simple castle. You'll learn all about the align tools, mirroring, and helper tools. Cool. So, drag a cylinder on the cone to the work plane. So, whoop, there it is. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Got to match that height by bringing it up. We're going to bring a cone in. I'm just going to go and line that up. Even though I don't see it, I know it's there. Oh, oops. Boom. All right. I think I did it too early. So it's wanting us to do it like this. All right, so you got two shapes and you want to align them, all right? If you highlight them both, you can click this button right here. Oh, that's mirror. This is a line, okay? Gives you these dots that you can click from. It'll kind of give you some previews of what the align's going to look like. So if we go here, it looks like that. Go Control Z. If I click align here, it'll, it'll align in the middle. But what I want is it to align here on this cone. So I'm going to click there, and it's all lined up. And now I can actually align it a lot of ways. I can even center align it to where everything's aligned to the top, bottom. You'll see. Okay, so next. Now, drag out a box and make it, we'll just do it right here. The length is going to be 60. The width is going to be four. And the height is going to be 20. Boom. Okay. We're going to drag this in over here. Or we can also use our, what was that, control? controls up or down. Boom. Oh, something's wrong. There we go. Select both the wall and the tower, and click align, and now it says click on the tower. Click on 
on the limit handle. Okay, so now I can line these up according to this tower. So, um, where's it wanted? The end of the closest parallel line to the wall. This one? Okay, oh yeah, right there. So it lined it up with this little spot right here. Okay, we're clicking next. Tangents on tangents. Tangent on tangents. There are many ways to describe how objects fit together. And these methods are often call, referred to as relationships. One very useful relationship is a tangent relationship. In geometry, a tangent is a straight line or a line that touches a circle at a exactly one point, uh, such that if you extend the line, it does not cross the circle. When you have objects doing that, it's the same, it's called a tangential relationship. Having a language to describe such relationships helps you think and talk about your design. Next, copying and pasting. Okay, so instead of using the duplicate tool, this time we're going to use the copy and paste tool. So we're going to select all this. We're going to hit the copy. We can do it up here. You can hit Control C. We are going to hit the paste. And next, we are going to move the tower right there there we go it looks like I was just supposed to copy the tower not the wall too so we will bring this guy up and we will bring this guy up to 40. We're going to copy this wall, paste it, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, boom, and put it in place, there, looks good, that's where it says. Use the align tool to make the wall tangent. So I hit. I select this guy. I hit align. I click just the sphere, and then I go to. Well, I think it's on the right one. See how it's grayed out? That means that's already where it's aligned. So we're good. We're good. Next, we are going to. Copy and paste the wall and line it up with the other end. Luckily, I know from experience that if you actually just use, if I copy, if I copy this and paste it, it kind of pastes it off the wall. So, but that's okay in this situation. Dupl duplicate puts it right in its spot. So I'm going to put that guy there. Same thing. Let's say I was off this time. I want to select the cylinder. Go to align. I'm going to click the cylinder and then I'm going to click there where it's supposed to go. Even though it looks like it's wanting it a hair shorter than that. So let's. Okay, that'll work. All right, next. Grouping for easy alignment. So we are going to select all this stuff, the top cone, the cylinder, the wall, the side cone, top of the side cone, and we're going to group it. 
I'm going to copy and paste. Okay. And so we've got two walls. Next. Now we're going to click mirror, which mirrors. So see how the walls are on this side? If I click the mirror button, and like this, it's going to flip it the other way. And now it's the opposite. And I'm going to move this guy over here. I don't know why. Okay, so now it's saying to align the grouped wall. So I'm going to go like this. Select this wall. Go to align. I'm going to select this wall here and that little dot right there and boom, it's aligned. Next, and the power of delete. Hmm, don't worry if you don't like um, castles with pointy towers, it doesn't make more sense. Would you want more defense? We should replace the pointy towers with some battlements for archers to rain down arrows. Ha ha ha. So, we're going to select the one of the towers, or we'll select both of them, why not? And ungroup them back to normal. Select some of the cones. We will select. <laughs> Click the helper on the helper menu drag the work plane helper on top of one of these cylinders. So we're going to click right here. This is the work plane. And we're going to drag them right on top of one of these cylinders. Boom. Oh, wait. No, it wants us to drag it on this one. Next, continue. Okay, drag out a polygon and stretch it out until it's 26 millimeters from point to point. So... Where's our polygon? There it is. Oh, we want six sides. We're going to shift. hard to tell. So it's 26 point inch. Okay, there we go. So we're there. Okay. Resize the cylinder diameter to 16 while holding Shift Alt. So 16. Hang on, we're going to cancel that. Move this down to 5, like it said. I'm just going to type it in. Okay, now it says drag out the cylinder and change it. Oh, so I'm dragging out a new cylinder. I'm going to 
gonna make my diameter 16, so shift. I could also just type in 16 on both. Bring that guy somewhere in the middle. And resize the cylinder to 16. Okay. Align the cylinder into the hex and group the hex. So we're going to select these two. We're going to go to a line. And if you click on the middle one and the middle one on the other side, it aligns them perfectly. And then now it says to group them. And now we are going to select this guy and we're going to align to this guy. Right here. There we go. Goodness gracious, this is a lot of work. All right, now copy and paste the battlements and align them to the next tower. And when you have your work plane helper out, you will paste to the new work plane, putting out the battlements at the right height automatically. So, uh, I think I missed something. Oh, whoops, ungroup. And we are going to change that to a, a hole, I guess. No, no, not all of you. Just you two. Nope. Right there. All right, first select this guy. Come on. Select him. Make him a hole. Now also select this guy. Now let's group him. I'm going to turn that to orange because it's bugging me. There we go. Okay, now I can control copy, bring this guy out, take him over here. Doesn't really matter if I get it right because I'm going to select this guy. We're going to go to the align tool. We're going to click on the cylinder and we're going to align that to the middle of the cylinder. Now we're going to. I guess I will delete this guy, fine. Uh, going to change our work plane to the top of this. Boom. Now if we paste our cylinder, control V or the paste button here. Looks like we're going to have to rotate it. They want us to rotate it. So outside is small roads, just like if you want. There. And we're going to select these two, align, select the cylinder, it needs to be aligned that way. There we go. And one last time, this time we're going to copy this one. Just set it over here, select this guy, go to align. Select the cylinder, so that's what it aligns to. Click on that one and that middle one, and we are aligned. Look at all that. Next. Oh my gosh. Drag the coordinate plane helper to the front of the castle. Which, which side do we want the front? The taller side? Sure, why not? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. Okay, so I didn't finish. So what it's saying is like if you want to add more stuff. So this is where you can add more stuff to your castle. So I want everyone to do something different. This is how I'm going to know you actually did this assignment and watch this video. Is we're going to put an entryway. Right there. Mm. 
group in those. Uh, we're gonna skip that. Go all the way through this time. Let's try that again. I'm gonna group him. Got our, our pathway. We're going to they will if you go to this text one. You can drag text right there. Let's go ahead and shift alt, drag that text down. This is going to say Mr. Mr. White's Castle. Castle. There we go. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, we are going to need to flip that up. Oh, whoops. So let's go to mirror here. We're going to flip that that way. And there we are. All right. And then now I can kind of drag this to wherever I want it. I want it right there. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to put my work plane back where it's supposed to be. I'm going to click this. And this wall, I want it to be same color. Actually, let's go ahead and select all these walls. And a castle should be gray. I'll make my text dark gray. And we're going to feel like it's sticking out a little far. So I'm going to push it in a little bit. So, and later on you'll get to see some of these others, but there's like a shape library here. Oh yeah, simple dinosaur. So we're gonna drag this dinosaur in. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh, we don't need to look at him. Ferocious beast. He's gonna be attacking my castle. Oh, I can't believe they let me get to do this. This is fun. All right, uh, let's go back to the simple shape, basic shapes. We got to give this guy some wings. That looks like a good wing ish. So, come on, roof. So, I'm going to drag this guy, bring it in, let's do what I think a wing would look like on this guy. Let's select this work plane up top, and I'm going to add a actually we're gonna add the cylinder here. We're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, come on. Too much stuff going on. Oh dang, before I do that, let's control Z that. Let's change this diameter. About like right there. And let's add a little bit of a bevel. OK. 
that. Now we're going to... Oh, goodness. What am I doing? Alright. It's a lot of work to add the drink, these wings, huh? This better look cool. Alright, extend that out. We're going to... Rotate this 90 degrees. We're going to pull it down to the object. We're going to click on shift, shift. We're going to go to align. Oh, whoops, the mirror. Align right there. I want to. Not doing what I want it to do right now. Okay, let's try this again. I'm just gonna move it where I want it. Grab that little guy right there. All right. We're going to select this guy. Like these two and we're going to group them we're going to color them blue and I'm actually going to cut this control X and I'm going to change my work plane to here to paste bring this guy over Bring him up a little bit. I'm going to duplicate him. And I'm going to rotate that right there. Bring these two ends together ish. Gonna group these two groups. And then I'm going to. Hmm, we need to change our work plane to do that. So let's change our work plane. It needs to be like something like that. I'm going to rotate these wings forward. Oh, yeah, right there. Got my dragon. It's attacking my castle. I could 3D print this whole scene. And my daughter could have a new toy. So, it's kind of cool, kind of fun, have fun with it, uh, do something different with your castle, and uh, it is showing you, like, if you want to, so for some of my assignments, I'll have you actually send me the STL file, which is just the 3D model file, if you go to export right here, and click STL, um, it will start preparing it for download, and then it'll make a printable object, or we can throw it on the 3D printer and print it out. We're not going to print these castles because they're really simple and basic and you guys are going to make a lot of stuff. So yeah, and then you just save it to your computer and you'd upload it just like you upload a picture on Blackboard. Okay, so have some fun. You don't have to do the dragon part. So you just do the castle part, make some changes to your castle, do something. So I know it's yours. Once again, take a screenshot. There's plenty of ways to do that. And uh, then you're done. And it, says, so you, and it also says project completed, so you can take a picture of that where it says project completed. All right, uh, good luck with this, and I hope you enjoy your introduction to Tinkercad. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff with this.